and welcome to Pride, the day when thousands of gay men and lesbians gather to celebrate their sexuality. This is party politics. I mean, this year, we're not even having a march. No, it's a parade. However, this has left some people feeling a little less than gay. They think that Pride has sold out and gone mainstream and is now nothing more than a gay trolley dash for straight people to point and laugh at. The Great Pride Divide. But at least well, I'm going in style. Uh, excuse me, what are you doing in my car? <laughs> Just to say, you look so like her. Look at that. Uh, That's very good, isn't it? Like who? <laughs> well, Barbara Windsor. No, it's uncanny. Uncanny. Oh, don't be dull. Barbara Windsor. With our very own pearly queen, Barbara Windsor, at the helm, London's 27th annual Pride March got off to a rainbow start. Held 30 years in a day after homosexuality was decriminalised, we have a lot to celebrate. Pride is also our chance to show the world what it means to be gay. But what does it mean? Should we fight for our rights or party to our poop? National Drugs Helpline, 0800 We're here, we're queer, but we don't seem to be marching in the same direction. What do we want? Equality! When do we want it? Do you really have a reason? Do you really have a point of view? Do you raise that fist in anger? Is this a march or just a disco cue? Is this the politics of pleasure? Is this another way to run and hide? Is this the day we come together? Or is it gonna be a pride divide? Pride divide. Now, it's not just straight people who look at Pride and roll their eyes. No, people like gay journalist Mark Simpson have long been suspicious of gay culture and politics. So, seeing the show, he's going to be telling us what we've done wrong. Oh, yes, he's the great dissenter. It's my world that I want to have a little pride in. As we all know, gay is good, and everyone fortunate enough to be gay is, of course, glad. But they're not too busy feeling proud. In fact, gays are so glad and proud they have a big parade every year to show the world just how glad and proud they are. And what great underwear they have. Bang my own drum, something annoyed. I think it's pretty. Visibility, you see, is a political act, not just a personal king. That's why Japanese tourists, taxi drivers and policemen must see as much of the gay paraders as can be shown without the use of a torch and rubber gloves. Only then will they accept that gays have a right to come out from the shadows and declare, I am what I am, long after everyone knew what you were and long after people stopped caring. And this, you see, is the real reason for Pride. It's a marvellous opportunity to come out again and again, year after year, to relive that golden moment when you burst from the chrysalis of the closet and were born again as a happy, flappy gay butterfly with wings of rainbow-coloured lycra. In other words, the last time you felt special. But the march does still have a sense of purpose. For many, just being there is a personal and political act in itself. The march is always the most important part of the festival to me. Um, it was the day before Pride, six years ago, that I found out I was HIV positive. Um, I was told over the telephone while I was at work. Um, and so the march is my milestone. Um, I've done it in a wheelchair, I've done it in six inch heels. And this year I managed it with full blown aids. So it was hard work, but it's the best part for me. The parade over, the marchers begin the three mile journey to the festival. It's trannies by the train load. La, la, la. <laughs> <laughs> room for the bag. Tonight, tonight, that I'm going to go with that. 
if gay visibility wasn't enough. Now the poor straight commuters have to feel us and sniff us as well. After much underground hijinks, we finally arrived at Clapham Common and, well, tripped our merry way to the party. This year, the Pride organisers launched a survey asking, what does Pride mean to you? Sounds like they don't have a clue what it's all about either. to me is, is just a, a wonderful day for being yourself, which is not easy at the time. It's a good day to just chill out about your sexuality and not worry about what anybody else thinks and just Whatever be free. It means that we're not going to take any more shit. It means that we're not going to be put down, we're not going to be trivialised or sent away. We're not hiding. We can be here and we have every right to be here. It means being a lesbian mother that I can be out and be proud and be with other people who are gay and it's just absolutely fab. It's such a wonderful feeling. Pride comes but one day a year and we should make the best of it. What do you think? It's OK. afternoon for a very special reason. We're here to join with Lee and Madeline as they make their vows to one another and as they receive God's blessing on the relationship. With its marriage tent, fun fair and shopping arcade, Pride has come a long way since 1971 when a handful of gays and lesbians first took to the streets. How does today compare to the first ever Pride 27 years ago? Well, compared to the first ever Pride, I mean, first of all, there are a lot more people here. There are only about a thousand people back then in 1971. And it was more political. Everyone was shouting, give me a G, give me an A, give me a Y. And sort of, what do we want? And I'm thinking, well, a cup of tea would be quite nice. You know, I'm not used to all this marching. So that was great fun as well. Nowadays, anybody chanting G-A-Y is probably just promoting a nightclub. One of the world's biggest free music festivals, Pride is now more about pop than politics. I suppose people feel that it's political enough just to be sort of loud and waving their arms around and stuff like that. You know, I mean, I suppose it's a kind of politics, isn't it? There's not much to distinguish it from any other big pop festival like Glastonbury or Reading. I just wish that on top of the main stage they had a simple slogan, lesbian and gay equality now. I for one can never remember it being political, particularly. The bottom ground message, you know, the grassroots message is that we're visible and we're all here. That's the message, that's the only clear message we can send. Respect me, I Oh, the first Pride for 18 years without a Tory government! Oh. <laughs> I'd like to see people talking about the issues that actually matter to lesbians and gay men. Why are there people up there talking about, you know, the fact that we don't have an equal age of consent, the fact that we don't have partnership rights, the fact that we don't have um, ho hospital visitation rights if our partner is sick? Oh, you're so political, Chloe. Oh, let's hope so. Are you political out there? Two. One, two, two. I'm not. I'm sorry to be boring, but these issues are real, and these are what lesbian and gay lives are about. Look, I want to tell them, guess who I've seen backstage? Peter Andre. <laughs> Backstage was awash with eager young pop puppies getting ready to please and tease their audience of screamers. They know which side their buns are buttered. Peter Andre is up here. Apparently we're not allowed to get near him or touch him. Look at the things he's surrounded with. When you go to gym, you get muscles here and all around you in big coats as well. Girls down there, are you ready? Because he's in the house. Poor Peter. Now he's been put in a closed container. He must be like a veal calf. You think there must be EU regulations against this sort of thing? Can we welcome on stage for the time of Pride, Mr. Peter Andre? Woo! The amount of straight acts really shows um, what sort of market uh, the Pride Festival is appealing to, because a lot of the acts are not acts that a lot of lesbians would know about. And uh, a lot of the music's very young. You can tell that by the number of straight teenage girls hanging over the security fence shouting for Peter Andre. 
I really don't mind the amount of straight performers at all, as long as they do it for the right reasons, and they're not just plugging their record. But I fear, I fear they are just plugging their record. What does pride mean to you? Um, to me. It means uh, another gig for us. Yeah, it means exactly. outside gig. exposure. It's exposure. And more experience for us. That's it's right. a new and experience. A, and a lot of gay people. Yeah. What good is sitting alone in your room? Come on along to pride. Life is a disco tent, my friend. Leave all your worries outside. Pride, gays and lesbians attempt to realize their greatest and most generous ambition to turn the whole world into a gay disco. A little bit more. Each year the festival gets bigger and bigger, the entertainments get flashier and trashier as more and more people answer the call of the New Jerusalem. Ooh, ah, uh, just a little bit, just a little bit more. You know what I'm looking for. <laughs> Understandably, the coming of the kingdom of Gina is something that most gays can hardly wait for. A world of free love and shirtless men showing you their shaved armpits is a religious experience. Gina wants you for a sunbeam, so don't come down. And it's a great consolation to know that the real reason you felt alone in the universe was not because you are human or frail or separated from God, but because you were meant to dance till dawn in a spandex all-in-one, surrounded by people with mobile hips and chemical smiles. Disco is the gay salvation. Come to London, come to Pride, where all the gays are sweating together to create a utopia with strobe lights. Unfortunately, for the time being, until some more lesbians can be trained up, nasty straight men are still required to put up the disco tents and install the portaloos. Gina J! Oh, she could change my mind! Pride is a great opportunity to celebrate and party and be together every July. It's a joyful time and a fun place to be. However, we also are here to remember those friends, relatives, lovers and loved ones who cannot be here with us today. Those who have died and some who are living with HIV and AIDS. This is a special moment just for them, the release for life. A minute of silence coming up if you'd like to take the time to pay your respects. I'm not going to sing a song because I can't sing. I'm just here to introduce a couple of friends of mine. You're going to love them. Please welcome from Texas, Eddie and Charlene. Yeah, you can say what you want, but it won't change my mind. I feel the same.
that gay people don't bite. I think that's fine. I want heterosexuals. I want their kids. I want that man and his kid in the pram. I want the kid in the pram to come over here. I want them to know from six months onwards that all this is just part of the whole spectrum of things. And why have pride otherwise? Rachel Smith, the chair of the Pride Trust, has suggested that it's her ambition to make this a family festival. Now, the family as an institution has been used to to threaten gay people down through the years. And the last thing we want is to turn this into a family festival. For years we've been trying to convince the straight world that the world isn't exclusively straight. And so if we become like our persecutors, then that's really tragic. But has exposure to gay vibes bent any straights? Scott Capuro and I went on the prowl to find out. People criticise gay men, they say all oh, fashion's taken over from sexuality and all gay men look alike. Does that mean if a straight man or a straight woman walks in here, you'll immediately be able to spot them, Scott? I think so. I mean, there's... I think that's a straight couple right there. No. Uh, you're married, aren't you? Good guess, good guess. Oh! oh. oh. How does he think? Straight? Well, I'm straight, but they are let live. And yet, and yet, turn, turn for a moment. We've gone for the two earrings. Wow. Yes, we've gone for the two earrings. Wow. Are you there sure you're not good. bisexual? No, I'm straight. Really? Right. I'm fucking straight. Oh, you're fucking straight. Have you been together long? About three, <laughs> four hours. <laughs> you picked up at Pride. Uh-huh. Oh, no, they definitely are. No, no, no. no. I think he likes me. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's Italian, you know, they'll have anything. We have a straight tent, we have to take it back there, is that okay? No, 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 that's no. okay. Is that all right? No, I take you. No, it's all right, darling. No, it's okay. Come on, we'll we're fine. fine. No, no, it's fine. No, we'll talk to you later. No, it's fine. <laughs> Just bye-bye. So. Oh, ciao. Ciao. Ciao, Bella. Ciao. But this isn't the only straight invasion. Pride is now sponsored by a host of mainstream companies. It keeps the festival free, but are they just poncing off the pink pound? I think it's time that when commercial sponsors sign up to support Pride, that they are required to give an assurance and undertaking that they do have fair and equal treatment for lesbian and gay people in their employ, and that they do commit themselves to equality for lesbians and gays in our society. That's a minimum that we have a right to expect. The companies that are two-faced and who don't give rights to partners and who don't um, acknowledge uh, gay relationships as being equal uh, in financial terms, heterosexuals, heterosexual relationships, are exactly the people we need to convince. We need to get them on board. We need to have these events. We need their money. We get into a dialogue with them. Otherwise, how else are we going to convince them? We have a magic wand. Red and yellow and pink and green, orange and purple and blue. I can buy a rainbow, buy a rainbow, buy some other stuff too. Pride has always been about change, but now it seems to be about loose change and what to get with it. Fight for your right to accessorise. The Pride Plaza will sell you everything you need to be gay. Gay t-shirts, gay shampoo, gay earrings, gay pensions, gay incense, gay hats, gay food, gay rubber, gay dolls. They'll even try to sell you gay books. Cheers. Here you can buy gladness, pride, and even a personality. Probably one that's as plastic as the flexible friend you bought it with in the first place. Naturally, you don't haggle over the price, quality, or point of any of these items. Since they're gay, they're great, and it's the positive duty of gays to buy them. Gay is goods. Is this a candle? No, it's not a candle. MasterCard, Visa, Amex are all welcome. Questions about what any of this has to do with homosexuality generally are not accepted. You love it, really. Buying your sexuality all day can be a tiring business. Being gay, you see, is bloody hard work.
saying that pride, we got it right, everything's cool and dandy. Gay no. culture rules. No. So what are you saying? All I am saying is that, you know, you don't have to buy into everything just because you like people with the same shaped genitals. You know, it's an ideology, the gay identity. It has to be said, in terms of gay identity, you wouldn't need to be Desmond Morris to spot that you're a bit of a puff. No, that's true. And will you be coming to Bride again? Probably, yeah. And next year you'll bring suntan lotion. I think that would be a good idea, yes. <laughs> I've gone very pink, haven't I? Never mind gay. <laughs> Well, I guess if pride can bring a flush to Mark Simpson's cheeks, it must be doing something right. Today was my first pride, and it was it was just blindingly good. I remember I came up the escalator at Marble Arch, and there was silence at first, and a third of the way up, someone blew one whistle, and then other people started blowing whistles, and by the time I got to the top of the escalator, I was in tears, and everyone was thumping on the side of the escalator. I sort of surged through the barriers and met my friends at Marble Arch and it was, it was a sensation. I couldn't stop crying for ages. It was wonderful. Pride 97 received messages of support from all three political leaders. Only a few years ago, this would have been unimaginable. Tony Blair has sent this message to us today. I am delighted to send my best wishes for a successful Pride Festival. The new Labour government wants to build a new Britain free from discrimination. I want to assure you of my commitment to achieving such a free society. Thank you for your welcome today. Let us be proud of what we are, of who we are, and of what we can achieve in the months to come for equality and justice for us all. Thank you. Pride isn't perfect, and it's never going to please everybody. But it is important, and it does make a difference. At the end of the day, with equality so close, surely there's room on the political agenda for a kiss and a quick firework. Pride 97 is over. 320,000 people are trailing to the streets of as I We'll see what happens with finances and then let's tie it up. And do you think there'll come a day when Pride just doesn't matter because we have been completely assimilated, one big happy community, and we don't need to kind of go, ooh, we're gay and proud? I think we need to be. Need to be
passing you the microphone.